Hello, it's John Heaton. Um, sorry it's been a few weeks since my last video. Um, a few reasons for that, but I'm back. And today I'm going to re review the recently released basement tapes from Bob Dylan um, in expanded form versus the previously available one, which was this from 1975. And uh, don't have the vinyl with me here for the old one, but uh, this album is an interesting one because it came in between this album, Blonde and Blonde 1966, where he was at the height of his uh, word imagery and sort of mid-60s uh, create, created peak really, before he had a motorbike accident and went into basically retirement until January 68 when this album came out, John Wesley Harding, very much stripped down and uh, just a basic band playing on here, not too much added instrumentation. And uh, The Basement Tapes is pretty similar in feel to um, John Wesley Harding. This was the original release from 1975, which I, I know is flawed, um, but I still have a soft spot for it. And uh, what they've done with the new one is that they've concentrated on the Dylan material and they've uh, got rid of the stuff which was just songs by the band for the most part. Um, and I kind of miss, I must say, I miss Bessie Smith from this, from this album, which I loved. But uh, anyway, I guess for a Dylan bootleg series, they're concentrating on the Dylan material, which is good. And this album, it's still kind of bootleg quality. Um, compared to the Blonde and Blonde and John Wesley Harding. But songwriting-wise, uh, these are great songs, and there's no, no let-up in quality uh, in terms of the songs Dylan was writing at the time. I mean, I'll just name a few for you. I Shall Be Released, You Ain't Going Nowhere, Quinn the Eskimo, Tears of Rage, um, Nothing Was Delivered. These, these are top-notch songs. Um, Okay, so this, this album is a double CD uh, with a nice booklet with some pictures in here. There's a nice alternative Nashville skyline front cover there. And uh, it's been nicely remastered. I can hear the vocals clearer on this. And in many cases, the, any additional instruments that were added to the original release have been removed. So. Ironically, that makes what was originally basically a bootleg possibly even more of a bootleg. So uh, I hope you're not put off by that because I, I initially was a little bit put off with that because it, it was not mega cheap. And I uh, thought, well, 17 quid for a, what is basically a bootleg album? I hesitated, but I'm glad I stopped hesitating and bought it because it's it's uh, along with all of the bootleg series that Dylan has put out, superb value for money. See, I don't know any other artist who's gone through his archive, or his record people have gone through his archive and put out just tons and tons of stuff from, uh, you know, from live versions to alternative studio versions to tracks which weren't even on albums at all. And uh, the Basement Tapes is very interesting. Um, because he recorded all this wealth of material, as I say, with some very strong songs, and he didn't even put anything out at the time. And it was eight years later when this finally came out, kind of put together by Robbie Robertson of the band. Um, and as I say, it, well, it did a good job on, for the most part, but it did miss I Shall Be Released and Quinn the Eskimo. Uh, which are two of the, the, ma the major tracks from this collection. So this album rectifies that. And there actually is a six, I think it's a six CD version, which you can get for a small fortune, which contains every single thing they laid down in the basement tapes. I, I don't think you need that much. I, I think most Dylan fans will be satisfied with this. Maybe if I win the lottery, I'll go and buy the other one, but... This one is, is probably gives you all you need. Um, so let's just go through a few of the tracks. I mean, I should be released. Uh, the version on here, it's really nice to hear Bob do it um, from the original sessions. Uh, it's per per perhaps not the best version in the world. I actually prefer 
the version that they did on the last waltz. Um, and also Bob re-recorded it for his Greatest Hits Volume 2 in 1971. And that version isn't too good either. So I think both of those studio Bob versions don't do the song full justice because it is a classic. It was, it was I remember it was my friend Sean's, one of his Desert Island discs, and uh, as a song, it, you just can't fault it. Just the version isn't, isn't quite as great as it could have been, maybe. I mean, for example, if I Shall Be Released had been on here with, uh, with decent production, can you imagine? So, You Ain't Going Nowhere, one of my favourite Dylan songs. Brilliant. Um, Quinn the Eskimo was given to Manfred Mann, and this is Bob's original version. It's a little bit ropey, maybe you could see why it was missed out of this, on, from this. But it's nice to hear Bob's version. Uh, obviously he did a live version which appeared on Self-Portrait, which was quite nice as well. And then other songs like Too Much of Nothing, This Wheel's on Fire, Nothing Was Delivered, which were all on the previous album but had been nicely remastered. Probably my two, two of my favourite tracks are the ones which show a really, in fact throughout this album there's a lot of humour from Bob, which let's say is not always true of his albums. So Apple Suckling Tree, great favourite, and Million Dollar Bash. Just hilarious. I love it. Um, it's not all five-star material. I mean, there's a ropey version of Blowing in the Wind, which I probably wish had been left in the can. The version of Minstrel Boy, likewise. Um, Johnny Todd is okay, a bit repetitive. Um, Sign on the Cross, very nice demo of a very rare, unheard of song from Bob. A lot of fans know it, but it's not been out there in the public domain. Uh, Yay Heavy in a Bottle of bled Bread. <laughs> That's another good one. I think, as I say, the songwriting is brilliant. I think it's got a really nice feel to this album. Light and loose and very warm and a nice atmosphere in the basement, I imagine, with a few... Uh, Bottles of wine, no doubt, or something. So uh, I recommend this highly. I recommend a, mo most, if not all, of Bob Dylan's bootleg series. I think they're second to none in terms of major artists putting out their archive work. And uh, thank you for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>